Begin the Gemara today on Dafa in Vava Medalef. We're starting six lines from the uh, bottom of the Yamud, where it says, Amr Ab Yehuda, Amr Shmo. Okay, so the Gemara starts first with a new subject, but this is going to right away connect back to what we learned before in the Mishnah about a uh, Kala. The Gemara calls it here a Kala that got married, and it turns out that she has mumen. She has different blemishes, and therefore the marriage is not a marriage. So the Mishnah spoke about this, and it said in the Mishnah, it depends where the women were discovered. If they were found in the father's house, so then the father is going to have to prove that the mum came after the wedding, and therefore the Kedushan took effect. And if it happened in the husband's house, after she's fully married, so then the husband is going to have to prove that it happened before the Kedushan, and therefore the, the Kedushan never took effect, because she had a mum already. That was the Mishnah. We had it before a few Pshatim in that Mishnah, which will be relevant for the continuation of our Gemara. But first let's start. The Gemara starts, like I said, with a new subject. So, Amr Rav Yehuda, Amr Shmuel. Rav Yehuda said the name of Shmuel. Amachlif, Pada Bachamar. So you have two people and that they're exchanging a Pada, a cow, for a donkey. So the way this works is, when one comes, and that we're, we're in Daf Ayin Vav Amr Aleph. Ayin Vav Amr Aleph, towards the bottom of the Yamad. So when one person comes, well, let, let's say the Bala Chamoy goes and makes a Kenyan on the Pada, he does Meshichet. Meshichet is the Kenyan, where he, he, he pulls it into his property. He does a Kenyan on the Pada. Automatically, the Chamoy gets acquired by the other party. So you don't need both of them to do the Kenyan. One does the Kenyan of the Meshichet for the Pada. Automatically, the other one is acquired. So what happened over here is the Moshach Bala Chamoy is a Pada. So the Bala Chamoy, the owner of the donkey, came and did the Kenyan of Meshiche on the Pada. Now, the Bala Pada did not yet have a chance to come and take his, the, the donkey that's now his. Ah, and he comes and he discovers that the Chamayr is dead. So now what's the question here? The question is, did this entire sale take effect? If the Chamayr died before the Meshiche, before the Kenyan was done on the Pada, so there's no Kenyan here, this whole thing is an exchange for a, a pada for a chamayr, but if the chamayr was dead, there's no kenyan of the pada. But if the chamayr died after he did the mishicha on the pada, so then there's a kenyan. And the fact that the chamayr died, so too bad, that's his bad luck that the chamayr died. So that's basically the argument over here between these two people, the bala chamayr and bala pada. They're arguing whether the, 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 the bala chamayr says, the kenyan took effect. I made a mishicha on your pada and the, the kenyan took effect. The chamayr was alive when I did this. The Balapada says, no, the Kenyan did not take effect because the Chamer was dead at that time. So, so, so that's uh, the argument of here. What, was there a Kenyan on this Pada or not? So what did Shmuel say? Who, who's the one that we, is going to have to prove that, the, the, that he's right? So he said, Al Bala Chamer, The Bala Chamer, which now has the Pada, is going to have to bring a raya, shahoya chamayre kayom bishas meshichas pada, that his chamayre, his donkey was still alive when he made the kinyan on the pada, so therefore the sale took effect. My chamayre was still alive, so you get my chamayre as an exchange, and when, when I did the meshich, when I did the kinyan on the pada, the kinyan took effect. He's going to be the one that has to bring the raya. Okay, now the pshat and why this is, why, does he, why is he the one that has to bring the raya? So it's not, the Gemara does not explain, it's not very clear, and this is actually a very big Chiddush. Because if you think about what's going on over here, the Bala Pada, he's the one that has, let's go back to what we learned <clears throat> before, we learned yesterday, the Gemara earlier said, various different chazakis that you have to take into account when you have situations where there's a suffix. So number one, Cheskas Mamein. Who has the, the Mamein in his possession? The Bala Chamar already took the Pada into his possession. So he's the one that has the chazak on the Pada. So seemingly, he's the one that has the chazaka on the mummy. It's number one. Number two, as we learned before, there's also a concept called chazka saguf. You have to look at what is the status of the body that we have a doubt about originally. What's the chazaka of the guf of this chamer? The chamer was alive. We know that it was alive before, and now it died at a certain point, and it's not clear when it died. So the chazka saguf would say that it died at a later point. The chazaka is that it's alive. So then that would say that it probably died after the sale took effect, after he did the Mashiach on the Pada. So both the Cheskas Mamain and the Cheskas Aguf supports the position of the Baal HaChamar that says that the sale took effect. But nevertheless, Shmuel comes and says he's going to have to prove that he's right. Why is this? <coughs> so Teisus over here in one shot says that the reason is because there's another Chazakeh, and that's called Cheskas Marakama. 
The Cheskas Mara Kam over here is that the Pada belongs to the Bala Pada and the Chamoyer belongs to the Bala Chamoyer. As far as the Cheskas Mara Kam is concerned, before this new sale took effect, we knew that the Pada belonged to the Bala Pada. And it was not yours. It was not the Bala Chamoyer's. You now want to create a new Kenyan. You have to prove that this Kenyan took effect. If you can't prove it, we're going to go back to the previous status, which is the Cheskas Mara Kama, who was the previous owner, and the Bala Pada gets to keep his Pada, and he can argue and say, I got no Chamoyer in exchange, because the Chamoyer was dead already at that point. That's what this Gemara is based on here. And okay, you had Hanami, true, but Cheskas Mara Kama apparently is very, very strong. And therefore, if there's a doubt, if there's a question whether the sale took effect or not, we go back to the original status that there was before and that there was no sale. So therefore, the Bala Chamoyer is going to have to bring a Raya that the sale took effect. There's another Chiddush over here in this Gemara, which the, the Gemara will soon focus on, and that is the fact that the Bala Chamoyer has to bring a, a Raya about this, even though the Suffolk happened not in his Rishos. The Suffolk happened after he already did the Meshicha of the Pada into his Rishos. And that's when the Suffolk began. So seemingly, the Suffolk began after the fact. Once he already has the Pada in his possession, nevertheless, he's going to be the one that has to bring a Raya that this sale took effect. Okay, that's the Chiddush, that's the Halacha of Shmuel. And on this, it was said, the Tane Tuna, the Tane of our Mishnah that we learned before is a Raya to this Halacha. And which Mishnah? Kala. The Mishnah of Kala will be a Raya to this Halacha. So like I said, the Gemara here connects this back to our Mishnah where we have a suffix regarding a marriage. A woman gets married and now we discover that she has a mum. The question is, the husband says the whole thing is a Mekah Tos because there's a mum and the mum was there before marriage. The father, which still has the possession over his daughter, says no. The, mar- the, the marriage is a good marriage. The mum came out afterwards and it's bad luck of the husband, but the marriage took effect. So again, a very similar argument to this argument over here between the Bala Chamoyer and Bala Pada, whether the transaction took effect over here as well, there's an argument whether the marriage took effect as well. And what did it say in our Mishnah? So there, there were two parts of our Mishnah. Here the Gemara is going to go back to what we learned before, that according to one opinion, there was a few ways how to learn our Mishnah. Rabbi Laza said the way to learn our Mishnah is you have to divide our Mishnah into two. It's two different Tanoim, our Mishnah. The Reisha of the Mishnah is Rabbi Yeshua, and the Seif of the Mishnah is Rabbi Gamliel. Rabbi Yeshua says the father is always going to be the one that has to prove that the mum was there only after the Hasana, and therefore it took effect. Rabbi Gamliel says, no, the father never has to prove anything. It's the husband that's always going to have to prove that the mum was there before, and therefore it's a Mekah Tos. We, we, learned, we learned all this already before, okay, okay, I mean, okay. I'm not going to go back to all the details, but we, th- th- those are the two opinions over here, Rabbi Yeshua and Rabbi Gamliel. Okay, so now the Gemara starts off with the ratio of the Mishnah. The Gemara says as follows, Hi Kala, from which part of our Mishnah do we have a Raya from the, the story of the Kala? Do, how do we have a Raya to the case of our Mishnah? Uh, to the case that Shmuel said over here. If you're going to say the Raya is from the case of Kala that it said in the ratio of the Mishnah when she's in the father's house. What did it say in the ratio of the Mishnah in Sovia? That over there the father has to bring the Raya. So even though, even though in this case, where she's already in the possession of her husband, the, the, again, she's, still, that, that, she's not in the possession of her husband. She's still in the possession of the father. She's still living by the father. That's the case of Deresha. But the Gemara before explained that according to this Tana, it actually does not matter. She could be in the father's house, even though the Gemara here says Beves of via, the Gemara does not only mean Beves of via, that's what Rashi explains, because the Gemara before explained that according to this Tana, it doesn't matter where she is. Is she still in the father's house? Even after full marriage, she's, still in the, if she's already in the husband's house. Even if the Suffolk comes up then when she's in the husband's house, who's going to be the one that has to prove the status of this woman? The father. Father's going to have to prove that the mum happened after the marriage, and therefore the, the Kenyan takes effect. So the Gemara wants to prove from there, just like you see over here, that the father is the one that has to prove what happened here, even though the suffix happened after she's already in the husband's possession, the same would be over here. Even though the Bala Chamoyer already has the Pada in his possession, and only afterwards the suffix came up, nevertheless the Bala Pada, the Bala Chamoyer that is, that has the, the, the Pada now in his possession, he's going to be the one that has to prove that the Chamoyer died after the sale. And therefore the sale took effect. 
Right? So, and, and the Gemara, so again, the, 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 number one, the Gemara is comparing the fact that we're, we're putting the, the, the onus of proof on the individual that the suffix happened after the fact, a- after the fact of the Kenyan of the Pada, or, and after the fact when the Kala is already in the, in the husband's possession. That's number one, that's the comparison of the Gemara. Another point in the comparison of the Gemara is Chazaka. We looked at the Chazaka of the money. That in our case, we say that we, we follow the chazaka of the money of the mother Kama, who was the previous owner. And over here as well, we follow the chazaka of the money. The husband has the chazaka of the money. The father wants to take the ksuba money out of his possession. We follow the chazaka of the money. And therefore, we say that the father has to bring the proof. But the Gemara says right away, you can't compare it. As far as this second point here is concerned, it's not the same thing. Midami, how can you compare our case to the case of the father that has to bring the raya for his daughter? Over there, the reason why we force the father to bring the raya is because he wants to take money out of the husband. He wants the husband to have to pray, pay the ksuba money. Over here, the bala chamoy that now has the pot on his possession, he wants the kinyan of the pot to go through. So his raya is to keep the pot. He's not trying to take the pot out of the bala pot's possession. He already made the mashikh on the pot. So he's going to keep the pot. So over here, it, it, there's a huge difference between being mighty money or keeping the money. So there's no comparison to that case of the Mishnah. So Omar Rab Abbe, Rab Abbe says, so if the Raya is not from the Reisha of the Mishnah, which follows Rabbi Yeshua's opinion, so then, then we could say that the Raya is from the Seifa of the Mishnah, which follows Rabbi Gamliel's opinion. In the Seifa of the Mishnah, it said the exact opposite, that no, no, Rabbi Gamliel's opinion is, no matter what, the husband is always going to be the one that has to bring a raya that this sale did not take effect. Because she already had a mum before the chasana. Okay? So therefore, what do we see from Rab, uh, Rabbi Gamliel? That the, the father, not the father, sorry, the husband, the husband wants to keep his money at the ksuba. He doesn't want to be mighty money. <laughs> he has his money at the ksuba. He wants to keep his money. And nevertheless, we force him to bring a raya that the, the, the mum was there already from before the marriage. What does that prove to you? That even in such a case where he wants to be, uh, keep his money, nevertheless, he has to bring the raya. And the reason is because if you look at the status of the chasana, what's the previous, what's the status in the beginning of a chasana? That he owes the ksuba. He wants to break the, ch- the chiv of the ksuba that he has. So even though he's keeping his money, but he wants to break the status of the, of the chiv of the ksuba that he has, so therefore he's going to have to bring a raya that this whole thing was a mekkah toss. So it's the same thing over here regarding the bala pada and the bala chamoyer, where there's a suffix whether the sale took effect because you had a previous owner that owned the pada and you're trying to change that status of the marakama. So over here as well, the bala chamoyer is going to have to bring a raya that he was kind of the pada. Even though he's the one that has it already in his possession, he's the one that's muhzik in the money, but it doesn't matter. You want to change your previous status of the ownership of the pada, you're going to have to bring the raya. So over here, this seems more of a comparison to the case of our Mishnah. But the Gemara says, even though in that sense it is the same, in both cases, the one that brings the raya is bringing a raya to keep the money. But vakati le'dami, there's another reason why it's not same, the same as our Mishnah. Why? Because in our Mishnah, the reason why we forced the husband to bring a raya, that this uh, marriage did not take effect, because because over there there's another chazaka. He has to break the chazaka of the father. What's the chazaka the father has? Cheskas aguf. That his daughter was born without a mum. So even though the, the husband has the cheskas mamain, the ksuba money is in his pocket, but the father has a cheskas aguf. So you're coming to break the father's cheskas aguf, so therefore you have to bring a raya. Oh, but over here, Bala Chamoy, Maisi Raya, the Bala Chamoy is bringing a Raya, Umaykim Cheske Biyade, and he's keeping the Chazak in his hands. He, both Chazakis are working in his benefit. First of all, he has the Cheskes Mama, and he has the Pada right now in his possession that he, that he just acquired. And second of all, the Cheskes Aguf also works in, to his benefit. What's the Cheskes Aguf? There's a Cheskes Aguf regarding the Chamer. This Chamer that died, the Cheskes Aguf says that the Chamer probably died at a later point. It died after the transaction, after the acquisition of the Pada. So therefore, both the Cheskes Aguf and the Cheskes Mama support his position. So why should he have to bring a Raya? So you can't compare it to the case of our Mishnah. Oh, Rab Nachman by Yitzchak, so Rab Nachman by Yitzchak answers and explains. Let's go back to the Reisha of the Mishnah. That's really where the Raya is from. Kala, Bebe, Savia, we're bringing a Raya 
from the Kala, the Vesavia, and the Reisha, the Tana and the Reisha, Rabbi Yeshua holds that always, the father always has to bring a Raya. It doesn't matter at what point the moon was discovered, the father has to bring a Raya. And I, so what was our question before? You can't compare it to the Mishnah, because over there, the father has to bring a Raya because he wants to be mighty money, money from the husband's possession. Over here, we're saying that the Baal HaMoyed has to bring a Raya to keep his para. So how could you compare the two? Says the Gemara, in our Mishnah as well, the question that we're discussing is not only the Ksuba money, but the Kedushin. We're also discussing the actual money of Kedushin that the father received for the marriage of his daughter. And now the question is whether he can keep that Kedushin money. So in our Mishnah as well, it's also a question about keeping the money. And still we say that the father is going to have to bring a Raya to be allowed to keep his money. So, so too over here, we're saying that the Bala Chamer is going to have to bring a Raya to be able to keep his money. Now, Veloy Teimer, the Gemara clarifies what this means regarding the Kedushin. Do not say, Alibi de Mandoma, Kedushin, Lav, Letibu, and Nitno. So, this is a Machlaikis in the Gemara and Baba Basra regarding Kedushin. When a man gives the, the money for the Kedushin to his wife, or in our case, it actually goes to the father. So, this is a Machlaikis about this. What, and what happens if, in the end, this husband never ends up fully marrying this wife? Before the full marriage, she died, or some other illness happened, and he never ends up fully marrying her. Right? Kedushin is only the first stage of the marriage. He never ended up fully marrying her. So there's a machlekes about this. One mandama says that Kedushin, lav nitnu, which means that if he never ends up fully marrying her, it's, it's an unspoken agreement. It's an obvious thing that he didn't mean that the Kedushin should stay by the wife if he didn't end up marrying her, and then she's going to have to return the money. Only if you fully married her, then she doesn't have to return the money. But there's another opinion that says that it does not make a, a difference. The word tibuin, the word tibuin literally means it's sunk. It's sunk in, meaning ah. that once it's given to the wife, or in this case, it's the father of the wife, then it's there, it's there to stay, and no matter what happens afterwards, you never get back the money. So now you might think that according to the opinion that says Kiddushin lavla tibuin nitno, that the money that was given for Kiddushin is conditional. If the actual marriage will take effect, the full marriage will take effect, so then the money stays there. So therefore, over here, we have a question whether this full marriage takes effect, because now we see she has mumin, she has blemishes, and we don't know if the Kedushin takes effect. So definitely, according to that mandama, there'll be a question about this money of the Kedushin, whether the father can keep it. But the Gemara says it's not only a question according to his opinion. Even the opinion that says that once you give the money for the Kedushin, it's sunk. Meaning it's there, it remains by the wife or by the father that got this money, and it doesn't matter what happened afterwards. <laughs> so if so, over here, even if the full marriage will not take effect, what difference does it make regarding this money of the Kedushin? So the Gemara, it's not so. That's only true if there was an actual certain Kedushin. Elamite, then the husband passed away, and the second stage of marriage never took effect, but the Kedushin itself was a Kedushin. So then this Mandama says, we never take back the money. If the Kedushin turns out to be a mistake, like over here, if she has a mum, and it turns out that it was never a Kedushin, so if the father will bring a Raya, that the mum was there only after the Hasana, then he can keep the money. If he's not going to bring a Raya, he won't be able to keep this money. So here we see that the father has to bring a raya for the money that's already in his possession. Why? Because he's trying to change the, the, the status of the way it was originally. So the same thing is also regarding the Bala Chamer and the Bala Pada, where the Bala Chamer wants to change the status and create a new Kenya that he now owns the Pada, even though the Pada is currently in his possession. He already made the Meshikha on the Pada, nevertheless he's going to have to bring a raya to keep this Pada. The Mara asks on this, Meisvei... So this is a Mishnah that starts off speaking about Trefis. So the Mishnah says as follows, Machat If you have a needle that was discovered in a behemoth after the Shechita, and you find it in the Beis HaKaisis, which is a certain section in the stomach of the animal, which looks like a kaisis, like cups, and it has a thick wall over there in the, uh, in the stomach of the animal, and you find the needle there, and it's not clear if the needle punctured through and through. If it punctured through and through, so then it's going to be Trefis. If not, not. So it says as follows. If the needle is there just on one side, kshayda, it's still kosher. Mishnei then if it was there on two sides, treifa, then it'll be treif. If you find a speck of blood, so then you know that this needle was there from before shechita. So then, then if it's through and through, so then you're going to know it's treif. But if this needle, the, the place where the needle is, you don't see any speck of blood, why is there no blood if there's a needle there? Because the needle got in, into that area after shechita, so there was no blood that came out. 
Huglad. Okay, so this is all the halacha that's negaya to Hilchas Trefus to know if it's Tref or not. But there's another thing that's negaya here. There's also a money matter that's negaya here. This butcher or this sheikh that bought this animal from a farmer, so he bought it from the farmer on the condition that it's going to be a kosher animal, not a treif. Now when you discover that it's a treif animal, so then the sale has to go back. It's a mekech tos. I got a treif animal from you. So how are you going to determine if you got a treif animal or not? Or maybe it was a kosher animal and only, it only happened afterwards, after the sale. So huglat piyamako, if you see that there's a scab in the area where this wound is, with this pin, with this needle that is, biyidua, so then that, that you know, that this is there already from three days before the shechita. So if you bought it after those three days, so then you can go back to the farmer, to the seller, and say, look, you gave me a treif animal, give me back my money. Loi huglat piyamaka, but if there's no scab there in the area where the wound is, so now it's not going to be clear. Now, if there's no scab there, it's not clear exactly at what point this animal became a trefa. So now there's an argument. The butcher says, you sold me a trefa animal. And the, 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 the seller, the farmer says, no, I didn't sell you a trefa okay, animal. The trefa happened later. So there's really no way how to, uh, how to figure this out. I mean, after the fact, now, how are you going to figure this out? So I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, the one that wants to be might see the money, he's going to be the one that has to bring the raya. That is right. So what are we talking about over here? In, in a regular case, when a person buys an animal, he probably pays for the animal first, and then he gets the animal. And so if the case over here is that the butcher or the shaykhet, he already paid money for this animal, so, uh, so what are we saying? He's the one that has to bring a raya, umapik. And only then will he be able to collect the... Uh, back his money that he paid for, for, for this animal, because he's going to prove that it was a treifa. That's what it's saying over here. But the question is, Shmuel says that it works the other way around. Why is this so? The Baal Behemoth should be the one that has to bring the Raya in order to be able to keep the money. So right now, if you look at the, the Chazaka of the money, so the mo- this money that this Baal Behemoth, that the farmer got paid, What's the cheskas mother kama of that money? Who's the one that had that money originally? The money of the payment? The butcher. What are you trying to do? You want to keep that money of the payment and change its original status. You want the sale to go through. Right? That's the argument here. Whether the sale went through or not. The bala behemah, the, the, the farmer wants the sale to go through and keep the money of the payment. What did Shmuel say before when you're making an exchange from a chamer and a para? The one that wants this new sale to go through, he's the one that has to bring the raya. Even though he has now the potter in his possession, it doesn't matter. You're changing the status. You want, you want this new sale to go through. So over here as well, the Bala Bahamid, the farmer, wants this new sale to go through. He should be the one that has to bring a raya v'naikim to be able to keep the money of the payment. So why are we saying over here that the one that wants to stop the sale, he wants to say, no, the sale never went through. and wants to be mighty that money of the payment. Why does he have to bring the raya? So the Gemara answers, the case over here in this mission is, Medulayov Tafchadami. He didn't pay the money yet, Pachlal. It's not a case where he has, the, the, he, he wants to change, the money is already in his possession, and therefore you're going to say that he, he no, he, the, the money wasn't paid yet, Bechlau. That's what we're talking about over here. So the Gemara asks, how could you say such a thing? My Posca, what's up? Is how, why, why are you establishing? Why are you saying that he didn't pay the money yet? Is this a normal thing that you could say, that usually a person that sells an animal, he trusts the butcher that he's going to pay him for the animal after he gets the animal? Why, why are you saying that the animal was not paid for yet? That, that doesn't make any sense. Usually you pay first. And then you get your animal. So why would you say that that's the pshat on this Mishnah? I mean, the Mishnah doesn't specify, and you could assume for sure it includes even a case where he did pay for the animal. <laughs> so Ella, so because of this Shaila from this Mishnah, the Gemara refutes what it said over here, the way it was quoted what Shmuel said. El kiosi Romi by Yecheskel. When Romi by Yecheskel came, Omar, he said, Loit, tzaisinu lahani, kloli, dukal, Yehuda, ochim, ishmei, Do not listen to these rules, to these halachas, that Yehuda, my brother, said in the name of Shmuel. We had this a few times. There were these two brothers, Yehuda and Romi. They were both the sons of Yecheskel. And a few times we find that uh, Rami came and argued with his brother Yehuda and he said, this is not what Shmuel said. Rather, Oma Shmuel, Shmuel said exactly the exact opposite. That going back again to the case of the Bala Chamoir and Bala Pada, they're exchanging the Pada for the Chamoir. So what's the halacha? And now the, the, the Chamoir died. And it's a Suffolk. At what point did the Chamoir die? Before the sale or after the sale? So he said, Kol Shenoilat Suffolk Bereshusai. The one that the Suffolk happens in his possession all of Araya, he's the one that's going to have to bring the Raya. So what he's basically saying is the Bala Pada, 
the Balapara is going to have to bring the Raya at what point this Chamer died. Since this Balapara, this uh, Balapara wants to be uh, Moitzi, this, uh, he, he, again, the Balapara wants to come and say that the sale never took effect. Uh, he wants to tell the, the Baal HaChamor that now has the Pot in his possession. He wants to be Moitzi, the money from the Baal HaPara, from the Baal HaChamor, that is. So therefore, the Baal HaPara is going to have to bring a Raya. Again, the, so the, the Lashon that he says of here is, Kol Shanaylet Safik Bereshusei. So what he's saying is, before we said that if you are the one that wants to change the previous status and say that there was a sale, you're going to have to bring a Raya. But now Rami is saying in the name of Shmuel, Punkt Fakert, we look at the present status. In the present status, the sale took effect already. The yeah. Balach Hamar did the Mashiach on the Pada. Yeah. You're the one that wants to say that the present status is not true and it did not take effect. So this is, the, the Suffolk is Neilat Bereshusay, meaning the Suffolk happens now, once already the sale took effect and you want to say it did not take effect and you want to be Maitzi the, the, the Pada from him, now you're going to have to bring a Raya. That's what he says. So it's Mamish the exact opposite of what we said before. And the Tanet Tune Kala, and on this, the Gemara says, we bring a Raya from our Mishnah, from the, the Mishnah of the Kala. So what the Gemara doesn't spell this out, but Rashi and Taisis both spell this out, that what this means is, this actually goes back to the Pshat that Rav said before in the Mishnah. According to Rav's Pshat in the Mishnah, when the Mishnah said regarding the case of the Kala, where there's a question with the, when the Mum happened, if the marriage took effect or not, so according to Rav's Pshat, it depends at what point the Suffolk was discovered. If it was discovered in the Rishus of the father before, before the full marriage takes effect, so then the father is going to have to bring the Raya. If it was discovered in the Rishus of the husband, so then the husband is going to have to bring the Raya. So we see that it all depends in whose Rishus the, the Suffolk happened. Once the, the, already the full marriage took effect, She's already in the husband's possession. Now it's fully after the fact of the marriage. So now the husband's going to have to bring the raya because he's trying to change the present status. So we see over here at this point in the Mishnah, we don't say that the one that's trying to change the previous status has to bring a raya. The one that wants to change the present status. Once the marriage is fully in effect and now the husband wants to change that and say that it did not take effect, he has to bring the raya. Over here as well, it's the Bala Pada that wants to say that this sale did not take effect. And he wants to get back his Pada. He's the one that's going to have to bring the raya. So that's a clear eye from our Mishnah. Meisve, now again the Gemara brings the same case as we had before regarding this case of a Suffolk if this animal that this uh, butcher bought was a tray for an app. Machat Shanimtsi Bavi Beis so he had this needle that was found inside the animal, the body of the animal. So what did it say over there in the Mishnah? If there's a Suffolk, whether he bought a tray for or not, who has to bring a raya? So it said that the Hamaitz Mechaveira Olavaraya, the one that's taking out the money of the payment, has to bring the Raya. So now here the Gemara asks the question in the reverse. The, 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 the Mishnah there did not specify whether the money was paid or not yet. We don't know if the butcher paid the money to the farmer or not. Now, we eat the law of Tabak Dami. So since the Mishnah doesn't specify, we could say maybe he didn't pay yet. So if it's a case that he did not pay the money yet, so Baal Beheime, Boyla Suyiraya. That would mean that the farmer, the seller, he's the one that has to bring a Raya, Umapik, and then he's going to be able to collect the money of the payment. But the question is why? The Suffolk happens now after the sale took already effect. Whether he paid the money or not, but the, 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 the suffix happens now but the shus tabach in the shus of the butcher, meaning we see that the sale took effect okay. already. The butcher is the one that wants to undo the current status of the sale that already took effect. So therefore he should be the one that has to bring the raya, even if the money is in his possession that he did not pay yet. But the fact is he's coming to change the present status. So how, why, why does the Mishnah say that he has to bring the raya? Answers the Gemara, we're going to have to say that the case is the yov tabach domi that he did pay for it already because he paid for the money or if he because he the payment was done already so therefore we hear that Allah is going to be that he's going to have to bring the raya for this again the same question we asked before how do you know that he paid it already so here the Gemara answer is simple since we're now we're saying the cases that he did pay before he took his animal so stomach the milsa it's usual before you don't pay for your animal a person doesn't give you the animal right that's the, that's always the usual thing you know no one's giving you their animal before you're going to pay for it so therefore the assumption is that he did pay for his animal already and therefore now if he wants to collect the money back he wants to change the current status and get his money back he's going to have to be, bring a raya for this why didn't he check it out first? <coughs> You did check it out first. No, we're gonna get it to the trefa. How? How are you gonna change? How are you gonna check the inner, the inner, the inner organs of the animal? How are you gonna check an animal? The inner organs of the animal. 
No, no, no. We're talking about basic cases, the stomach of the animal. There's no oh, way to check it. Oh, okay. Going back to the Mishnah. When could a husband have a taina regarding his wife that he married? That, look, I married her and I thought there's no mumin there. And now I discovered that there are mumin. If these, these mumin, these blemishes are in a place which is hidden. So he could say, I didn't know about it. But if it's a mum that's in an open place, he could have no taina. He definitely noticed this. Amr Rav Nachman, so Rav Nachman says, V'nichpe, person that's epileptic. So then, K'mumisha B'say Sadamis. This is a person that can't walk straight necessarily, falls over. So that's considered to be a uh, mum that's disguised. So yeah, one yeah. explains, V'hani Mili, but when's that true? The Kviya Lezman. If the way this illness is, that it comes and goes in the set times when this happens. So therefore, this wife of his, that... that uh, he saw before, she can sort of fake it. She, she can make sure to meet him in times of the day when she knows that she'll look completely normal and he never noticed it. Avalay clearly, but if she suffers from this illness and it doesn't come in particular times of the day, so then, so definitely when she met him before, she couldn't hide this and he knew of it. And if he still married her, he won't be able to argue that I had no idea about this mom. Okay, we're going to go right as I mentioned because the Shoshana is coming. So we're going to learn another stick with Gamada here. We only learned one Ahmed. <laughs> And uh, the next piece of Gemara is a, is a much easier, much lighter piece than the previous summit. So let's continue. A man that uh, has blemishes. Till we were talking about the blemishes of the woman. So a man that turns out that he has different blemishes, different things, illnesses. We do not force him to divorce his wife. And we learned already before about this. A woman is happy to be married to just anybody, even a man with a mum as well. But Amr Rav Shem Gamliel, Rav Shem Gamliel argues and says, not always, depends. When is that true? If he has small blemishes, small illnesses. If he has bigger issues, then we will force him to divorce his wife. The Gemara will explain what's considered to be large, great, big woman and small woman. So now Rav Yehudah Tani, Rav Yehudah's Gersa in our Mishnah was, the way we just learned it, Noildu, that it says in our Mishnah that these women that uh, he had came out after he married her. So then those women that came out after he married her, he does not have to divorce her for, for this. She, the, the wife can't say, I can't live with this. We know that she could. Chiyabarav, Tony, Chiyabarav learned in the Mishnah a different version, Hoyu. These are women that the husband had really from before the marriage. So now, man, man, do the opinion that reads in the Mishnah, Noel do that the woman came out afterwards. Koshkin, Hoyu. Most definitely, if the woman were there from before, she can't, uh, we, we can't force him to give a get. The Kasavra Vekibla. She saw those women before and she accepted it. Mandamahayu, the opinion that says that we're speaking about women that were there before, and on that case we say we're not going to force the husband to divorce his wife, so that's only those that were there before. Avon Noildu, those women that came out later, like that, uh, that she never accepted. That's something that she could argue and say, I can't live with this, and we're going to force the husband to divorce her. Ta-da, we learned in the mission. When do we say that we're not forcing the husband to divorce his wife if it's small woman? But if it's big woman, we do force him to divorce his wife. According to the opinion that says that these women all came out after the marriage. So here you can make a difference between if it's big woman, small woman, she can't handle big woman, but small woman she could handle. But the opinion that says that all these women were there before the marriage. What difference does it make if it's large woman, small woman? In both cases, she saw the fact that her husband has these women and she accepted it. So either way, she should have no tainess at this point. Answers the Gemara, no, she could have a tainess. When it comes to large women, she could say, I thought I could handle this. And she could say, now I realize it's too much, I can't handle this. But by small women, she can't have such a kind of a taina. Now the Mishnah said, the Elohein mumin gedalim. What are the big? So the Gemara actually explains. So here, here, these are the large women. So Pirish Rab Shem Gamliel. So in another place in the Brai said, Rab Shem Gamliel explained, Kagoin nismus eina. If he has, if he's blind, even on one eye, nikta yadai. He has amputated one hand. And nishbara ragli, one leg was broken. That's considered to be mumin gedalim. And this we force him to divorce his wife. It met Rabbi Abba Yaakov Omar, Rabbi Yechenen, he said in the name of Rabbi Yechenen, Halacha, Rabbi Shem and Gamliel, that in this Mishnah we pass him like Rabbi Shem and Gamliel. Rabbi Omar, Rabbi Nachman, Rabbi said in the name of Rabbi Nachman, that no, Halacha, Rabbi Yechenen, we pass him like the Chacham, we could never force the husband to divorce his wife. Now, Frek the Gemara, Mi Omar, Rabbi Yechenen, Hachi. Is it true that Rabbi Yechenen said specifically regarding our Mishnah here that we pass him like Rabbi Yechenen? But for Omar, Rabbi Yechenen, 
He said in the name of Rabbi Yechon, "B'chol makim sheshan Rabbi Shimon ben Gamliel b'mishnasenu alacha kamei." So we always pass like Rabbi Shimon ben Gamliel. Not only here, and there's only three exceptions: Chutz mi Arev v'Tzidon v'Raya Achreina. There are three alachas: Arev, Tzidon, and Raya Achreina. Whatever those alachas are about, one is regarding a guarantor, another is a case of Tzidon regarding a condition, a certain condition that was made in marriage, and Raya Achreina is when a person brings a Raya to a dintaira after the dintaira is over. Do we still accept that raya or not? So, so I'm not going to get into the details because it's not negay here. But the point is that only in three cases is the halacha not like Rabbi Shem Gamliel. Otherwise, it is. So why are we saying that Rabbi Yechonen paskin only here like Rabbi Yechonen? So answer the Gemara. You're right. Amiroim inu valiv the Rabbi Yechonen. This is an argument of Amiroim uh, according to Rabbi Yechonen whether we always paskin like Rabbi Yechonen or only here. Here, in this case, the following cases, everybody would agree that we will force the husband to divorce his wife. Mukishchin, person that has boils all over his body. And the Gemara is soon going to explain that it, it means much more than just boils. We'll see. Obal polipus, which the Gemara will explain what that means. Vamakamet, also explained to the Gemara. Vamatsarat nechoshe, someone that works with, uh, with uh, copper, also will be explained to the Gemara. Vaborsi, a person that works in a tannery. Bain shahoyu achlenisu, whether those women or those professions he has were before marriage, bain mishinisu, whether after marriage, naildu, that's when this happened, or that's when he got this profession. And Valkul and Amr Abmeya, regarding all of these things, Abmeya said, Afa Pishahisni Ima, even if he made a clear condition with her, you know that this is my job, you know, you know that I do these dirty work. And she was ready to marry him. But nevertheless, Yechaila Yi Shetayma, after the marriage, she can come and say, Svura Yi Si Shani Yechaila Lekabel. I thought that I'd be able to handle this. Vachshaveni Yechaila Lekabel. Now I realize that I could not handle this. So this is regarding all these mumin or these kinds of professions which are very filthy. She can say, I can't handle it. She'll have to accept all these things against her will. Besides the mukeshchin, a person with boils all over his body, it doesn't just mean boils, but it means it is very, very ill. And as the Mishnah says, what happens is this person loses limbs of his body. The, the, the flesh falls off of his body and he loses limbs of his body. So this is a t- terrible illness. This is something that she can't handle. Now, there was a story in the case in Sidain. The Bursi Echad, person that was working in a tannery, Shemais, and he passed away, and he passed away without children. Vahayle Ach Bursi, he had a brother that worked with him in the tannery as well, and now the brother had to do Yibum for the wife. So the Amr Chachamim, the Chachamim say, Yechayla Yishet Taima, his wife can say, La Achicha Haisi Yechayla Lekabel. The fact that you, uh, my first husband, your brother, him, I was able to handle yeah. the fact that he was dirty and filthy, and him, I was ready to live with. But <laughs> to live with you, I can't accept this, and therefore, we're not going to force yeah. it to do Yibum, and uh, she, uh, she, he's going to have to give a Chalitza. We had, we, had, we had to say, if you remember, we had a similar had, idea uh, before, that uh, even if she's ready to live with one person that does very filthy work, but that's only him. I like him, but you, I can't accept this. I'm not ready to handle this. So I about my bal polypus. What does this mean, bal polypus? Amr Avuda Mashmul Reach Achaitim, a bad odor from the nose. The Masnita Tana and Abraisi we learned Reach Apet, a bad odor from the mouth. Of Asi Masni Ipche, of Asi Totis, with the, the names were exchanged. Um Manach Basimana, and he gave a sign as follows: that Shmuel like Pasik Pume Mikula Pirkin. Shmuel did not stop reviewing all the Mishnas of this Pedic. So Pume, with his mouth, he would review the halachas of his Pedic, and that was a sign to know that Shmuel was the one that said that Baal Polypus means a, a, someone that has an issue with his mouth, the bad odor from the mouth. What is Mekamets? My Mekamets, some of you say, I'm a Kabets, Tzoyas Klovim, a person that gathers the, the dung from dogs. Rashi says that he doesn't know what this is for, but then he says he saw in Ashkenaz, in Germany, that they would use this for laundry. <laughs> the Gemara asks, but in Abraisa it says that Mekamitz means a Borsi. Mekamitz is the one that works in a tannery. You're asking me a question from the Abraisa, but according to you, if Mekamitz is a person that works in a tannery, so then you have a question of the Mishnah, because it says, Mekamitz, Vamitzarev Nechoshes, Veha Borsi. So it says Mekamitz and Borsi separately. So how could you say Mekamitz is the Borsi? And says the Gemara, Bishlam must need some Lakashi. On the Mishnah, it's not a question. Kamba Borsi Godel, Kamba Borsi Katan. You could say that it depends. There's a person that works in a small tannery with a little bit of leather. He's poor, he doesn't have so much. And then you have a Borsi Godel, so he gets much more filthy. So in our Mishnah, it's not a question. Ella, Rav Yehuda Kashi, but according to Rav Yehuda, it's a question. 
Says the Gemara, Tanoi, this is a machlekes Tanoi, what a Makametz is. The Tanya will learn in the Brais and Makametz at Borsi. One opinion is that Makametz is the person working in a tannery. The Yashemrim, Zah Makametz, Zah Makametz says Klovim. Then Makametz means someone that gathers the dung from the uh, dogs. Vahmetzaref Nechoshes, Vahaborsi says the Mishnah, my Metzaref Nechoshes. What does it mean a person that works with the copper? Avashiyam Achashli Dudi, a person that's that's flattening out the copper in order to create uh, uh, any kinds of uh, kalim dishes from it, and it, it's a very dirty work. It, make, it, it creates a bad odor. <laughs> a person that cuts this copper out of the ground, and therefore also gets very filthy by this. Someone that cuts this nechoshes out of the ground. Omar Rav, Rav said, a person that says to his wife, I'm not going to feed you, I'm not going to give you any money. He also has to divorce his wife. Just like we're saying, a person that has blemishes has to divorce his wife. If he doesn't feed her, he has to divorce her as well. So he repeated this Allah of Rav in front of Shmuel. So Omar, Shmuel said, They gave to eat barley to Rabbi Lazar, raw barley to Rabbi Lazar, and this is not fit to eat. This is an expression that Shmuel said that Rav is teaching him a halacha that's not fit to accept because it doesn't make sense that you should force a husband to divorce his wife. Why not? Instead of forcing the husband to divorce his wife, force the husband to, to feed her. Don't force her to the divorce her, force her to, to feed her, and that's it. And the Rav, what does Rav answer to this? A person cannot live with a snake in the same basket if a husband does not want to feed her. You're going to go and force the husband to feed her, they're going to still continue fighting because he's not a mensch. He doesn't want to feed her. So you can't force her to live someone that's not a mensch. When Abzeda came to Eretz Yisrael, he found that Rabbi Yom Ben Yefes said the same thing in the name of Rabbi Yechenin, like Rab said, that we forced the husband to divorce her. Amalei, so he said to him, Aldo Achsua Saran Elaza Bebavel. Regarding this, Shmuel said the expression that Elaza that, ex- that repeated this halacha in the name of Rav that we forced the husband to divorce her, that he says he's eating barley, which is raw because this halacha doesn't make sense. Shmuel holds that you could force the husband to feed her and you don't have to force the husband to divorce her. Okay, Adkan. That's it.